Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan. And with a lot of players being introduced to the Souls series through Elden Ring, I imagine some of you have decided to go back and try the original Dark Souls and quickly discovered it's a very different beast. Yeah, the lack of a jump button still gets me. However, like Elden Ring, Dark Souls is a game that you can break. And today I'm going to walk you through my absolutely optimized guide to getting an OP weapon, shield, and the best farming spot in the game within the first hour-ish of the game. And just as a disclaimer, this game's been around for a while, so there's a ton of beginner's guides and strats out there that are probably different from mine, and that's totally cool. But for me personally, in my opinion, this is the easiest way to play the game as a complete noob who doesn't want to dabble in magic or whatnot. But if you have any suggestions for beginners, please feel free to leave a comment. So enough of me talking, let's crush this old ass classic. Here's how to get OP in Dark Souls in around an hour-ish. For our starting class, we are going to want to pick Thief as its opening stats align well with the weapon we are going to use. But also it has a secret benefit. It starts with a master key. This lets you open almost any locked door in the game, which can lead to some unintentional sequence breaking, but it does make certain areas easier, so I would suggest it. For your actual gift, you could technically pick whatever you'd want. I went with the black fire bombs, so I can use them to easily murder the tutorial boss. Speaking of the tutorial boss, as you progress through the intro, you'll eventually hit the big baddie. You're supposed to run past him and through the doorway, but if you have the black fire bombs and you manage to throw five at him without dying it will kill him around this time if you're coming from elden ring you'll probably notice that dark souls 1 is a much slower and more methodical combat experience which in some cases is easier and in others is not either way if you kill him with the firebombs you will get his weapon which we're not going to use but that's neat and if you don't feel free to run through the back door on the left and continue through the rest of the tutorial either way you're going to have to go through the rest of the tutorial to get the estus flask among other things until you finally can leave the asylum once you have the asylum you will be picked up by the giant crow and get flown to the main hub firelink shrine at this stage in the game, we're going to be doing several suicide runs for items now, so spend all the souls that you have. The weapon we're going to be using requires 14 strength and 14 dex to one hand, which we want. So at this point, I dumped all my points into strength. Okay, so before we go any further, let me explain how flasks work, since if you're coming off pretty much any other FromSoft game, it will be a bit confusing. First off, the amount that flasks heal can be upgraded by any Firekeeper, and there is one behind bars under Firelink Shrine. She requires Firekeeper souls to bump up the flask, which we are going to go get one early in just a second so keep that in mind. However, when it comes to how many flasks you can hold, it isn't based on your character like other FromSoft games, but rather the particular bonfire that you rest at. In this game, you'll have a number in the upper left-hand corner, and that is your current humanity. Like Souls, you will drop it on death, and you will get lots of items throughout the game that are called humanity that when you use them, they will heal you as well as add to that number. Humanity can be used for basically two main things. First, you can use it to become human at a bonfire, which will consume one of them, and this allows you to summon people into your world to help you, but also means you can get invaded. But another important thing is that if you are human, you can use a humanity to kindle a bonfire, which will upgrade that bonfire and make it so that whenever you rest there, you will have five more flasks for a total of 10 from that particular bonfire. Now, there's a thing you could do later that lets you bump that up further, but honestly, you probably don't need more than 10 flasks for like 99% of the game. So my suggestion is to kindle bonfires in key hub areas going forward, as it'll make the game much, much easier. It's kind of an unspoken easy mode. And don't worry too much about losing humanity. You get some from killing enemies, you find some on the ground, I never run out every run. Lastly, it's worth noting that Firelink Shrine is already kindled, so you get 10, so don't bother. Okay, now that we've said all that, let's go get a late game Firekeeper soul early. Keep heading down in Firelink Shrine, and eventually you'll find an elevator that you will want to take down. We are then going to head into the spooky ghost town off into the distance. This is a late game area, but we're just suicide running in to get an item. Once you cross all the bridges at the watery bit, you're going to head right. Be careful to keep an eye on the ground, as there are many cliffs that you could fall off of, which will instantly kill you. A little ways in, you will find a straight line that goes off onto an island that has an item on it. You're going to run down that pathway and grab it. This is a Firekeeper's soul. Hooray! Now die to the ghosts. When you respawn at Firelink, just head down and give the soul to the lady behind the bars, and your flask will be upgraded super early. Congrats! We'll get another one soon enough, but for now we're going to go the wrong way to get some bomb weapons. Now the way you're supposed to go is up the hill across from the bonfire, but instead we're going to go through Firelink and into the graveyard. Now, this is not where you're supposed to go early on, but it has a bunch of good items you're going to want to pick up for now. Don't bother fighting the skeletons, just run around dodging them and making sure you grab the following items. The Zweehender and the Winged Spear. The Zweehender is really, really good for a strength build, especially since you can get it early on, but we are going to probably be using the Winged Spear for the next bit, as we should be able to two-hand it until we can get the weapon we're actually going to use for the rest of the game. Yes, this isn't actually the main weapon that we want. Now, to get that main weapon, which is called the Great Scythe, there are basically two ways to approach it, as you're going to be diving into the catacombs. As you go down there, there's going to be an enemy that is a bit tough at this stage 
stage of the game, but if you take him out, it'll give you a forward bonfire to make retrying the run easier. However, to kill him, you are going to need to go get some levels first, and if you want to do that, go back to Firelink and up the nearby mountain and just continue the game as usual, leveling up your strength, dex, and health along the way until you've leveled at least five times. However, you don't have to do this. In all my previous runs, I just suicided from Firelink over and over until I got it, but it is much more frustrating to do it that way. So if this is your first time, I would actually suggest continuing through the game, getting some levels, getting some damage, kind of figuring out the controls with either the winged spear or a weapon of your choice. And once you've gained around five to 10 levels, head back to Firelink and do this next part. Okay, so you're gonna be heading into the catacombs, which you get to by following a downward path past the graveyard. This area is full of skeletons that cannot be killed completely unless you kill a nearby necromancer. Luckily, if you kill a necromancer, the necromancer won't respawn. You're going to head down and then to the left side pathway where the first necromancer is, there's also a nearby lever that you have to push in order to continue. The levers also do not reset when you die, so don't worry too much about it. There is a bonfire here, but you cannot use it until the necromancer and any surrounding enemies are dead. This is the spot I said you might have to level for. If you are strong enough, you should kill the necromancer and activate this bonfire. If you can't kill him on this run, you can either keep trying to kill him or just say screw it and continue the rest of the run to get the great scythe. It's up to you. Just be aware you won't have this bonfire to fall back on. You will start early back in Firelink. From here, you're going to need to continue through the catacombs. I suggest putting up your shield the whole time as these guys hit really hard. Once you cross the first bridge, you will see the second necromancer, which you will want to ignore, and just continue forward deeper into the caves. Luckily, the skeletons take a second to assemble to spawn, so you should be able to run past them with no issues. However, once you take the left, be sure to have your shield up as there are archers on the far side. You will then pop out of the cave to the right, and you'll see a bridge that spikes side up. We're going to have to flip it. The switch is on a side path to the right, but along the wall are spike traps you will need to avoid, so hug the outer edge. Keep running until you see a lever and flip it. Remember, the levers stay flipped, so if you die here, you don't have to push it again. Now, this next part I find to be the hardest bit. You're going to have to cross the bridge, then roll off the left side without dying. If you do it right, you will land on a ledge. When I did this, a skeleton followed me. I had to get rid of it before continuing. Below this ledge is another. Jump on it, and then jump off to the final one, and here you will find an item. It is the Great Scythe. Hooray, we got it. Let the reaping commence. From here, you can press the lever if you want, or try and kill the necromancer. Either way, we aren't doing the rest of the dungeon, so feel free to run around until you die. Then head back to Firelink one way or another, and let's discuss why we went through all this suffering to get this weapon. The Great Scythe is, in my opinion, the best weapon in the game, because it's just got so many all-around perks. I'm sure some will disagree, but here's why I personally think it rules. First, its range is absolutely insane. It reaches as far as spears do most of the time. This is paired with its absurdly good one-handed R1 and R2. All of its R1s are overheads, while the R2 is a massive sweep that's even bigger than a 180 degree arc. Combined with the range, and you can take out multiple enemies easily. But its ultimate move, in my opinion, is its two-handed R2. This move causes you to sprint in and then do a big sweep, followed by a secondary one if you press R2 and have the stamina. The reason it's so good is how enemies work in Dark Souls 1 is that often they won't wind up attacks until they perceive you in range. However, with this move, we can essentially cheese most small to mid-sized enemies by initiating our attack at a distance, and by the time we're close enough that they start winding up, you have already hit and staggered them. It does take a bit of practice to perfect, but once you have it, you become an absolute reaper of death. It's also worth pointing out this weapon has fantastic scaling for both dex and strength, predominantly dex, of course, meaning you can get it very strong very quickly. All right, so we have our OP weapon. We're going to use this for the rest of the game. Now you're going to need to play the game for a bit until after you kill the first mini boss, Taros Demon, and reach the dragon. Now, once you get to the dragon, you're going to run down a passageway under it, and there is a shortcut here back to that bonfire in Undead Burg. This is a great early game farming spot because basically from that bonfire, you can climb up the ladder back to the dragon, run up, bait its fire breath, and run back down, and you will get 555 souls every time as the dragon will kill all of the undead above you. Lather, rinse, repeat until you have as many souls as you want. We're going to find a much better farming spot in a minute, but just keep this one in mind if you need somewhere to farm safely. Now, it is also worth pointing out that if you get a bow and arrow and shoot the dragon's tail from under the bridge enough times, it will drop a sword called the Drake Sword, which is well known to be a good beginner weapon. People really like the Drake Sword because it starts at the very high base damage, but has poor scaling, and you don't find upgrade materials for it until much later. Later. So it means that it's good if your stats are low. Honestly, I personally think the scythe is vastly better in every way, even early game, but it is up to you. Regardless, now that we've identified the spot, keep it in mind and just continue progressing through the game until you eventually reach a grace by a blacksmith. From here, you're supposed to go into the church and onto the roof to fight the gargoyle and ring the bell, but instead, let's skip ahead to the next area to prep for a future farm and grab arguably the best shield in the game. From the smith, I recommend running past the big nasty demon and you will enter into the forest. Head left and just continue straight, watching out for the ants that will pop out of the ground, but if you have your scythe, you should be able to fairly easily kill them with your two-handed arc too. Eventually, as you progress on the left-hand side, you're going to reach a glowy door, which we are going to 
to open later. To the left of the door is a hidden wall. You're going to want to hit and pop that bonfire. It is a very important bonfire. From there, you're going to head back, and instead of going right back to the blacksmith, you're going to head left and find yourself at the top of a very large cliff face. Keep going down following the switchbacks carefully so you don't fall off until you reach the absolute bottom. You'll know you're there because there will be a black knight with a spear. Behind that black knight is the item we want, so grab the item and then turn around and run straight forward into the cave, popping the grace to de-aggro that knight. This shield is called the grass shield and is the best shield in the game, in my opinion, as it grants a great amount of stamina regen even when you are two-handing a weapon and the shield is on your back. This and the scythe are going to be your kit the entire game. They are extremely strong together. It doesn't quite have 100% physical block, but it's like 95, which in my opinion is close enough, so feel free to use it to block arrows and such. Okay, so we have a great weapon and a great shield. Let's unlock the best farming spot in the game, but in order to do that, you're going to need to store up 20,000 souls to buy the seal of Arturus from the blacksmith, which will unlock that blue glowy door you saw next to that secret bonfire. 20k does sound like a lot right now, but trust me that this is totally worth it. You can actually get 10k easily by killing the gargoyle boss on the roof, which you'll have to do to progress the plot. Be aware that if you're in human form and you've talked to Solaire, you can summon him by the gate of the boss, which makes the fight considerably easier. With an upgraded scythe, the shield, and some levels, this honestly shouldn't be that hard of a battle. After that, I'd suggest eating all of your non-boss soul consumables, which should get you to as close as 20k as possible, maybe even hitting it, and then just farm safe figures till you have the rest. Once you do, buy the seal from the smith and head back to the door and open it. Welcome to the best farming spot in the entire game. So this forest is a well-known cheese that nets you anywhere from 2 to 6k souls per run, though there is a trick. Essentially in the woods, there are four guys near the entrance, a knight, which won't respawn, a mage, who tosses dingleberries, a semi-invisible rogue, and a paladin. Your goal is to run a big loop and aggro all of them, then run back to the entrance, and instead of running up the stairs, run into the small alleyway next to the cliff on the right. Here, you will just stand around with your shield up, and if you did it right, the brain-dead versions of the Merry Men will run up the stairs, jump off trying to get you, and bounce off your shield and fall into the cliff below for two k souls a pop. Now, this doesn't work 100% of the time. Obviously, this is their AI breaking, and so sometimes it just doesn't break. Usually, the mage will get stuck and throw dingleberries at you, and sometimes they de-aggro, but after a few runs of practicing, you'll have it down and be able to get two to three of them pretty much every time. It's also worth pointing out that you can usually kill the mage with R2 hits as he's pretty stupid, but for the rest of them, be aware that they can kill you in about two to three hits at this stage of the game, so be safe. But regardless, this is by far the best and easiest farm in the game, even into the late game, and because there's a bonfire so close, you can basically do this on loop. Put on some YouTube and call it good. When it comes to stats, note that your weapon scales best with dex and the soft cap is 40, so don't go any higher than that. Additionally, you will absolutely want points in both health and endurance since the scythe eats so much stamina, so slot into those as you see fit. And lastly, if you haven't fully upgraded the scythe with titanite shards, you can buy them from the smith here with the massive amount of souls you've just acquired. So there's two more items that'll make this game cake, and the first is actually in these woods. If you continue into the woods hugging the right canyon wall, eventually you'll reach a new pair of warriors and some ends, where one is a heavy knight and the other is an archer with a stylish hat. The archer is named Ferris, and you'll want to kill her as she drops an amazing bow that you will use the entire game. The bow scales well with both strength and dex, which is what you're going to be putting your points in, and you will need a bow for several parts of the game, so be sure to pick this up. This may take a few tries, because you actually have to fight them, they won't fall off the cliff like the rest of the idiots who live here, but either way, it is absolutely worth pushing through and getting. The last thing you'll want is the best ring in the game. Before killing the gargoyles, you might have explored the top level of the parish and found a man in a cage. If you have a key, you can release him and send him to Firelink Shrine. For whatever reason, I totally spaced this in my run and killed the gargoyles first, so he escaped on his own. It doesn't matter either way, he's going to show up in Firelink across from the Firekeeper. You will recognize him by his stylish gold armor. Now, this guy is actually a big jerk, and he has a side quest where he kills the Firekeeper, and then you have to kill him later, and you get a Firekeeper sold to bring the Firekeeper back, but I honestly don't think doing his quest is worth it, especially since if you kill him now, you get some pretty great items. So I suggest just murdering him in Firelink. If you do kill him, you will get the Ring of Favor and Protection, which grants buffs to your health, endurance, and carry weight, but you can never take it off because if you do, it will be destroyed forever. So just don't take it off. Seriously, equip it in your second slot, pretend you only have one ring slot for the rest of the game, and go from there. It is a fantastic ring to have the entire game. All right, so we've got an incredible melee weapon, an incredible ranged weapon, upgraded them to at least plus five, a fantastic shield, a really good ring, and we have unlocked a late game incredible farming spot for our souls. Where do we go from here? Well, my main recommendation is to prioritize upgrading your scythe most of all. You can upgrade armor in this game, though honestly, I usually just wait until end game to do that. Once you get to Blight Town and the following area, there is a red and a black robe set, both of which are fantastic with their base stats. Note that to get any weapon past plus five, you'll need an ember that's in the depths, which you should find naturally, so be on the lookout for that. Additionally, something else you need 
to pick up in the depths is the spider shield because it has 100 percent poison block and toxic block which you will need in blight town however once blight town's done just switch back to the grass shield for the rest of the game and that's it honestly this kit is so completely absurd you could probably roll 99 percent of the game with it especially with the influx of levels you're going to be getting as an aside something you could attempt before an orlando is a run into the tomb of the giants to get the silver serpent ring which increases the souls you get but this is actually quite difficult early on not to get in but actually to get back out again and it's not within scope for this guide however if you would like me to make a video on how to do that early on let me know in the comments and i can make it happen and that is all i have for you today i hope this has helped you get a leg up in dark souls i absolutely adore dark souls it's definitely in like my top three favorite games and this is pretty much my go-to both build and like intro path if i want to just have a super easy breezy time going through the game it's like my comfort build so i hope it helped if you have any other suggestions for people or builds that you enjoy in dark souls please feel free to leave them in the comments and then go out there and enjoy the hell out of FromSoft's masterpiece dark souls